what what kind of day has it been? Can can you put that into words? Why don't we start there? Well, first, of course, it's so disappointing because we've worked a long time to have Nicole become a member of our faculty. So, you know, it's disheartening. But at the same time, I understand where she comes from. And I have heard from people across this country with whom I've worked or I know. She said such wonderful things about me that I'm deeply, deeply moved by the woman that is Nicole Hannah Jones. Um, so from st that standpoint, you know, it's both a disheartening end to a search for a, a reporter of her stature, and yet a recognition that she believes that our faculty, our school, and my leadership were on her side. That's powerful. How do, you, how do you move forward? You mentioned about having a difficult faculty uh, yeah. meeting. I mean, we've had, well, I, we've had everything, but how do you how do you move forward as a school, really? Because this is your school, <laughs> you know, in, in the spotlight for not really the greatest reason in the world. It's not our school. It's the university. Sure. And the university is, in fact, the place where every major debate in America goes on. That's what a university is for. Would I like to not be having this debate? Yes. Are we having this debate? Yes. Will we as a faculty help lead it? You better believe it. So I didn't ask to have this kind of a fight, but at the same time, I'm very proud that our faculty stood up to the journalistic values that they believe in. And we like to say that we prepare the next generation to ignite the public conversation. And we have done that. And we have to work to engage our students, our white, our black, our Hispanic students, our Latina students, so that our gay students, so they understand the world is changing and that they have a role to play as communicators. This is an experience in that for them. But I have to also make sure they feel welcome. And that's going to be hard because this has been tough for so many people. How do you, as a, a, a member of the faculty, put all the, the, the things that have happened at UNC over the years in just the last three years with Silent Sam, with some of the other um, racial reckoning conversations. How do you, how do you continue to be, to be focused as a member of the faculty there? Uh, I am really impressed by the public university and the very mission of UNC. I went to an all girls Catholic college. This is all new for me. The nuns built confidence in young women. Yeah. I always believed in women's colleges, but I can see what a state university, a public university can mean to a state, to its economy, to its students, to its, its future. And I am very convinced that they are important places where we must confront the really difficult questions of our time if we're going to move forward as a community, as a state and everything else. So nothing has uh, changed my mind about what a university can do. But I'd like to have a few a few less missteps. That would be enjoyable. I wanna don't think that, wanna be clear on a couple of things here. And I, you know, I know that there are some personnel issues that you probably can't necessarily comment on, but while we're talking about this, I don't, my understanding is that Nicole Hannah-Jones, when she first was offered a position by the university, she was offered a position and took a position without tenure. Is that correct? So let me go back. We recruited the job as a night chair, which was a tenure right. job. Okay. She went through the entire tenure process all last summer. She was voted on by our faculty. She was voted on by the, uh, the university's larger promotion and tenure. It then goes through to the provost. It then just usually goes through to the board of trustees, and there's not a lot of fanfare around that. Somehow things got stopped at that time. I did agree after it looked like the board was reluctant to vote on tenure because she had not been part of the university and the night chairs are, are set up so that you get professionals in the media industry to come in. So it's a different kind of professorship than many are used to. Somehow that never got explained and I wanted her to come. And they made a very compelling case that this fixed term professor of the practice was good. I thought it would be good for her. Now I realize it was a workaround. We recruited a tenured person. She deserves tenure. She earned tenure. And that was a misstep. And um, I am sorry 
that I ended up helping it become a workaround and really confusing people. But it was always a tenure job. Gotcha. Okay, but that's that's a clear distinction because I, I think that there's been a, a bit of a gray area, you know, saying, well, she was just offered this five-year fixed term, but she was initially recruited as a tenure. Totally. Yeah. And reviewed for tenure and received a glowing response for tenure and voted twice for tenure. The only place it got stopped was in the board of trustees, which is usually a kind of perfunctory spot. How do, you, how do you balance that given given the board of trustees and, and the power they have? And how do you- We are a public you, university. Yeah. We are a public university. It's a complex governance structure. And we must continue the conversation between the leaders in the state and those who run the university and the faculty and students to make sure that we're a university that's trying to find some common ground and where we can take on really difficult third rail issues, race, sex, prison population, science, all these things have been controversial in our partisan era. Politics, we can't shy away from them. We've got to have a debate in our state with respect. And, and I'll leave you with uh, you're disappointed today. I mean, I you know I know you wish her all the best, of course, and and she did what she thought was the best for her and her family. But I'm sure you're a little disappointed today. She's an outstanding journalist, a once in a generation journalist, not just a good journalist. She's a great woman. She's a lovely, lovely person. She's my alum, so I don't lose her. I already have a relationship with her. I just wish she was a member of our faculty today. But you know what? She's also built something that's gonna be pretty important in Washington, a center now of democracy and journalism, and she'll be the night chair of race and investigative journalism there. I just wish it was right here in the South where we really need this conversation.